Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at weather in the next 10 to 14 days for today's second video. Day 10 will take us to the 9th of January, and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the Senate GFS and ECM Ensembles. Maybe we'll try in a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. Gets us more or less to the end of January now, and I shall get over that for you in a moment. Just say that first video today was our 6 a.m. UK weather forecast, so check that one out. Like, share, and subscribe on both of today's videos. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that New Year's Eve Eve. So I hope you're having a, a nice uh, New Year's Eve Eve, everyone. Right, going to start off with the Central England temperature. The CT is uh, now down to 6.8. It's at 6.8. That's provisional. <coughs> Oh, yeah, sorry, everyone, the cost back today. Um, that's provisional to uh, yesterday, to the 29th of uh, December. So I think that's going to come in about 6.8, 6.9. I don't see that moving a great deal between now and uh, the end of the month. So well above average, about a couple of degrees above normal. These are GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're at London today, the red line. It's a 30-year upper air temperature average for London. Starting off a bit above average, the upper air temperature won't going to turn colder over the new year. Now, the cold spell. We had a huge wobble yesterday. And if you was on the live stream yesterday, Ensembles Watch, going through the trials there with me, we're looking at the GFS Ensembles, you'll know that uh, the GFS really had a big, big wobble yesterday. Although the trials and operational run wasn't too bad, but the Ensembles themselves um, really shifted in a milder direction. Now, the GFS, anyway, and its Ensembles, um, very much back on track for an extended cold period. So the cold spell might be uh, getting back on track. We'll go through the other model output and data at the moment. But that looks pretty good, uh, I have to say, for an extended spell, maybe a week to 10 days of the cold weather, really. From about the 1st through to about the 10th will be at length of January. After that, well, we see the upper air temperature begin to come back up again, head towards mid-January. Of course, it might turn a bit milder then. That is a long way off, and therefore, in the unreliable time frame. Precipitation-wise, it's going to be quite a bit of dry weather in the next two or three days. More unsettled uh, over the new year. Heavy rain, possibly some uh, wintry this mix in. Well, but I do note that the uh, risk of significant snow on the northern side of this low on New Year's Day has been very much reduced by model output overnight. So that's another change. Looks like it's just going to be heavy rain, strong wind sweeping through the country, and then we plunge down into the freezer after that. Um, and then maybe some wintry conditions around the 5th to the 7th of January, something like that, if those precipitation spikes a bit showery after that. Let's have a look at Snow Row. So not all that exciting for uh, London. We do see some snow spikes. So I would ignore the uh, snow spikes here uh, from New Year's Day to the 2nd of January, Norbos. But some snow spikes here potentially from about the 5th to the 10th of January. Let's go a bit further northwards to Birmingham. That was a little bit more encouraging. Oh, uh, we see some snow spikes for, still for the new year, still. And then uh, again around the 6th to 7th of January uh, through there. Temperature anomaly is from the 30th of December, 7th of January, a little bit colder than average. Uh, precipitation anomaly is from the 30th of December, 7th of January, driving average to yourself, average to above average precipitation up in the north. Race wind from Earth uh, from oldschool.net shows high pressure gone even further south today. The high that gave us the dry uh, Christmas has shifted down towards Bay of Biscay, and so most of the country now is back into those uh, west to southwesterly winds. So at least we've got rid of the fog. Right, let's start going through the chart data then. That's what you're waiting for. So it's our latest UK Met Euro run. It's looking for midnight on. Um, Thursday, by then, below pressure from New Year's Day has gone over towards southern parts of Sweden, and we're opening the door to a cold uh, northerly wind. And then we say cold through to the end of week as well. A little ridge of high pressure builds through the country Friday to Saturday. There'll be some hard overnight frost, I think, at the end of the week. And uh, that's how we end up with UK Met. Gets us to midnight next Monday. So still cold up to that point. Below pressure. This was, was, this was the spoiler, though. Most of 
yesterday's model output this low just here was pushing north and uh, switching the wind quickly back to a southerly southwest sea. The UK Met holds back a bit of high pressure, holds back a bit with the UK Met down to the southwest approaches. It looks like that low will probably end up going through the Bay of Biscay and so that keeps us in those cold north to northeasterly winds. So up to the beginning of next week, the UK Met keeping it cold. What about ICOM? That has us in those uh, northerly winds on Thursday. Cold for Friday and Saturday, mainly dry and uh, frosting. Then it starts bringing that low pressure in from southwest, so much further north with that low with Icon. Therefore, the Icon model is still wobbling with this cold spell. Just turn it colder for a couple of days at the end of the week, um, but then we're back into those uh, milder southwesty winds. So, UK Met is back on track. If it ever went off track, uh, Icon is still wobbling. Right, let's have a look at the KMA and see what that one's doing. So, again, we've got uh, uh, cold weather setting and cold northern winds setting in on Thursday. Then high pressure, um, well, low pressure, I should say, down to southwest approaches into the weekend. And that brings a potentially a snow event in for the end of the weekend, start of next week down in the south. More or less keeping us cold, though. So, the KMA, uh, not too bad if you want an extended period of cold weather. No little low coming from the southwest there. 6th to the 7th of January, that's another snow event as well. That's a week of cold weather through the first week of January. So it's eventually then start turning things milder. Second week of January, that's a long way off in this pattern. I think the KMA is more or less uh, back on track there. GFS, big night, run again for those northerly winds on Thursday, looking calm. Uh, wintry into uh, the weekend. Another low pushing through uh, to the north of Scotland Saturday to Sunday. There's the spoiler low, but the GFS, um, well, it's, it, the wobble started with GFS 6Z yesterday. So that's, uh, that low of GFS 6Z was coming up uh, like that. And many of the GFS ensembles on the 12Z suite are doing that as well. Uh, now the GFS is keeping that well away from us down towards the Azor. So the upshot is the GFS renews the northerly, renews the cold weather by the beginning of next week. That is a beautiful blocking area of high pressure set up around Greenland and Iceland and bring down this uh, very cold northerly wind with my 10 cells ice fur there on Monday into Scotland. And a prolonged cold spell then on the uh, GFS uh, midnight run. Very cold and wintry conditions. Uh, that's day 10. Uh, that blocking area of high pressure close to Greenland Iceland is going nowhere uh, anywhere soon <laughs> up to that point. So uh, the wind remaining from a bitterly cold north or north east direction. All of the Maya bearing areas of low pressure and westy winds whatnot being held at bay in the Atlantic. But GFS is back on board big time with a prolonged spell of cold weather. Um, and on and on it goes, actually. Check that out. That's the 11th of January. Again, the wind coming in from a direct north east. He's still extensive amounts of dormant blocking around Greenland. Ice and bitterly cold with the upper air temperatures. And they're keeping it cold really right way to the end of the GFS midnight run. That gets us to the 15th of January. No changes up to that point. We stay very cold, very wintry. Um, that's a really cold first half of January. I don't know what the CET uh, would be with that. I haven't worked it out. But I would imagine up to up to that point, up to 15th of January, if that came off, which it probably won't, but if it did, um, we would probably be looking at a sub-zero CET there for the first half of uh, January, I think. And maybe quite substantially so. So, uh, really, really cold and wintry GFS. Midnight run GFS back on track with midnight run. What about a 6 Zeb, though? That's the one that started the wobble yesterday. Let's take a look at that one then. Now, winds in from the north on Thursday. And then uh, it looks like we push the high pressure up to Greenland through the weekend. Bring down that northerly wind on Sunday. That's Monday next week. Yes, GFS 6 Zeb also back on board with this high pressure blocking around Greenland and Iceland winds in from a bitterly cold north or northeasterly direction. That chart looks pretty epic <laughs> I have to say for uh, cold weather lovers. That's the 7th of January again. Big block around Greenland and Iceland and pulling in those winds from the north 
uh, for the North East. And those very cold North North East winds, courtesy of that blocking area of high pressure, continues up to the 8th of January as well. Almost back in the wind in towards an easterly there on the 9th of January. That will probably bring snow showers into southern and eastern parts of the country. Uh, towards the end of the Jervo 6 there, the high pressure begins to decouple from Greenland and Iceland, and we start turning a bit less cold. Uh, although by the end of the uh, GFS 6, uh, we're having a go at get high pressure back to Scandinavia. The GFS uh, Midnight and uh, 6 Z runs are back on track with cold spell big time. Remember, it's GFS 6 Z that started the uh, wobble. Right, if you enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for showing everyone for doing that. Why not drop a comment and let us say what you think about this and all of our videos and content. Don't forget to tell your friends about Gaz Weathers. Well, Get to subscribe to you. Thanks for showing everyone for doing that. We've got around 30 subscribers to get ourselves to 19.3k. So if you could give us a sub, that'd be absolutely awesome. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. GM, again, with winds in the north on Thursday. Looking cold and wintry as we end the week. Same cold into uh, the weekend. Looks like we're going to push this uh, low pressure from the southwest. That's Sunday, midnight, certainly still cold at that point. Point. Looks like we're going to bring this low pressure up from the uh, southwest, and we do to some degree, and that could bring a surf end into southern parts of uh, the country. But as that clears out of the way, we renew the northerly. So the GM is back on board as well. The GM had a big wobble with a 12 set yesterday. The GM back on board with a prolonged cold spell setting up as well. This is Tuesday, the 7th of January, looking bitterly cold with those upper. Uh, temperatures and then we keep it cold through day 9 and 10 as well day 10 looks like low pressure going to try and have a go coming up from the southwest but basically this blocking air of high pressure around Iceland remains the dominating factor up to uh, day 10 so that's about 10 days of cold weather with the GEM and also the ECM looks like this ECM had a big 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 wobble on the 12th day yes let's see what midnight run is showing so again winds in from the north on Thursday bitterly cold with wintry showers and showers in the north then over the weekend we keep it cold with a lot of frost look at this show much further north that area of low pressure for the weekend into next week so the ECM is still wobbling everyone the ECM has not come back on board yeah so um that's monday uh, next week 6th of january now i'll probably bring snow to northern east parts of the country so remember if you want snow you want low pressure you see so it's a double-edged sword this it depends if you want it you've got a prolonged cold spell with some snow showers but not like a snow event then uh you'll want the gfs and you know uh, have a have a have a couple of weeks of really cold weather but not a huge amount of snow probably it affects in limited areas if you want snow then uh, that is a snowmaker initially, but of course it will eventually turn things milder. So it's a double-edged sword. It depends what you want out of your cold weather, I suppose. Eventually, the exam does pull, pull in a northerly again by the 7th of January as that low moves away to uh, the east. And then uh, the 9th of January, similar to the GEM uh, in some degree, we've got uh, low pressure trying to get back in from the southwest. Still the blocking air of high pressure towards Iceland. So the eastern is partially back on board. Um, but for like a prolonged cold spell, I'll probably need to have that low pressure at the weekend further south. It's in the more extended range with uh, the uh, ECM. So uh, that's uh, the 9th of January there. Uh, this is from weather outlook. Uh, that's a snow event down in the south. Then we're under high pressure, so very calm and frosty for the end of next week. Before it turns milder from the southwest around the 12th of January, and then that high pressure back in, similar to how we had it over uh, over Christmas. So a milder right at the very end towards the middle of January, but with a risk of some frost and fog. This is a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tometcho.com. Oh, plenty of rain in the north and west today, tonight and tomorrow. Uh, that's New Year's Day, so we're looking thoroughly wet on uh, New Year's Day. But you've been good. Well, it's not a lot of back edge or northern edge snow.
with that. So that's been reduced, the chance of snow on New Year's Day reduced. But it looks like it's going to be a very wet day and a possibly very windy down in the south. Once that gets out of the way, then we open the door. There's normally wind, so plenty of snow showers piling in to the north. Then we've got the low pressure coming in at the weekend. And that brings substantial amounts of snow in with it on Sunday. Um, but of course, it turns back to rain down the south, so it stays the snow in the north. And then the northern wind returns at the beginning of next week, uh, brings uh, more snow showers back into the north. Then we have another snow event into the south there on the 8th of January. That was quite substantial as well, particularly for Wales, the Midlands, and eastern parts of England. The ECM somewhere in between. In between, it's nowhere near as epic as like the GFS is. Um, oh, maybe that's like the compromise solution. We'll see what the trials there has to say. The ECM might come back fully on board with this. The trials there, I have to say, wait and see. But um, right now, let's have a look at the options on the table. So these are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles for day ten. Gets us to the uh, 9th of January. So 27 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure blocking in the North Atlantic, but we've got some high pressure down towards France, no pressure from here, and so that's started to bring back up the milder air from the south. And then we've got 24 with high pressure blocking in the North Atlantic around Greenland, ice with low pressure to the east. And that's like the GFS solution. Uh, that's keeping things cold, or very cold, really, um, at day 10 with that. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. It gets to the 14th of January, 17 members of the East um, Ensembles with low pressure pressure towards Scandinavia, high pressure around Greenland. Uh, that's trying to keep the wind uh, in from the north, trying to keep it cold. This high pressure down towards Spain, bit of a nuisance. That could be trying to get wind back up from the southwest. We've got 13 with low pressure through here. And uh, so that's going to be milder with winds coming up from the southwest. 12, including the control on the operation run, anti-cyclonic, high pressure to see over top of the country. And 9 with high pressure blocking around Greenland, low pressure to the south and the east. That's keeping things very cold with winds in from the north. Thing. So a range of options at two weeks. Um, it's all to play for then. And, uh, you yeah, know, there is a, a very significant um, minority option day 10 to keep things cold. So it all remains to be seen, really, what's going to happen as uh, we go into the um, end of the first week of January. Just how long this cold spell uh, is going to last for uh, so first week two, and then we're done. It's the 500 middle bar height zone. It's breaking down to wheat pins. The first wheat pin takes us from the 30th of December to the 5th of January. This week with low pressure across northern Europe, high pressure in the Atlantic. We're starting to switch wind around to a colder northerly. Week two is the 6th through to the 12th of January. High pressure in the Atlantic out to Green Iceland, low pressure to our north and east. Winds coming in from a cold north or northeasterly direction. Week three will be the 13th to the 19th of January. Blocking air of high pressure around Greenland, low pressure to the south of the east. Winds coming in from a cold northeasterly direction that keeps it cold there through the middle part of January. And week four really um, looking as though it could keep things cold as well. This is the 20th, 27th of January. This could be a very cold January if this is right. High pressure uh, again is uh, in the North Atlantic. It's going up towards Greenland. Low pressure down towards Spain. And so I can't really see a reason why that wouldn't be cold either with winds in from the east or from uh, the northeast maybe. No, it could be cold and wintry uh, January, if that's right. That's a big change from what the CFS was showing just a few days ago, telling us how the CFS does move <laughs> quite significantly um, when the weather pattern uh, starts showing signs of a change. We'll see. I think we've got to focus on uh, the end of this week and the weekend, to be honest, um, as uh, there is still quite a lot of uncertainty. But... The wobble might be sorting itself out and the Carl Spell might be getting back on track. I think tonight's 12Z bottle runs are going to be quite uh, quite significant. I might do a 12Z bottle roundup this evening, actually. 
uh, see what time I've got this evening. Right, we're done. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe. Thanks to everyone. My dear Matt, why not drop a comment? Let's know what you think about this and all of our videos and content. Don't forget to tell your friends about Gals Webbers and get them to subscribe to. And we thank you so much, everyone, for dear Matt. 30 subscribers will get 19.3k. So if you could give us a sub, that'd be absolutely awesome. Thanks so much, everyone, for doing that. Right, so then, maybe a 12 set bottle roundup this evening. I'll see what time. Uh, I've got Ben. Uh, tomorrow it's New Year's Eve, so uh, we're going to have a 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. There'll be a 10 to 14 day uh, final video of the uh, year as well. No extended European outlook tomorrow. That will be back a week on Tuesday. We'll end it there, Ben. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your uh, Monday afternoon slash evening, whenever you're watching this video. And for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.